Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tom's Cat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we have another round of our work from home module sew along. So today I really wanted to make this um, this round of the module sewing to be very approachable, very easy um, and something that you know break it down really really well so that hopefully it's under it's understood um, easily by as many people as possible. I just have a hair that went right into my eyeball. Um, because if you can get the basic down, building off of it and then creating basically an entire wardrobe um, from that point on is rather simple. And it almost gets to the point where your closet's like building modules on its own. Um, it gets, it's really fun when you get to that point where you can really um, shop easily, thrift easily, sew, everything just, it just kind of all falls into place. Um, and I also just realized I forgot one, one prop. Hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to bring my um, color palette, my color wallet over here with me. Now I've no idea bang on and on about colors and about, um, you know, I had my colors done and um, what a big proponent I am of that and what a huge change it's made in my um, own life and my own wardrobe. And if you don't believe me, go back and watch some of my old videos where I'm wearing what I thought were my colors um, and even my hair color, um, which was just, you know, I was always told, um, by people that love me though, that um, I should be blonde. You know, you look great as a blonde. That's not my natural color. <laughs> this is my natural color, or pretty close to my natural color. Um, I'm not, it, yeah, it, there's a little bit of added warmth in there, um, just a wee bit. Um, but anyway, it's very close. You can, you know, when it grows out, my hairdresser's done a great job of being very close to my natural color. But anyway, um, I have just, been just so shocked at the change in wearing what are my best colors and all of that. But even if you're not into that, even if you don't care what your best colors are, I do really highly suggest having some sort of a color palette that you could put together yourself um, just to kind of go by when you're shopping for your colors and or shopping period. I just think that it takes a lot of the guesswork, a lot of the um, extras that you buy that you don't really need, and it helps to everything in your closet has a mate and has um, something to wear with it so that you're not ending up with, you know, a whole bunch of party dresses in your closet or a whole bunch of things that maybe you really love singularly, but they have nothing else to go with in your closet so they don't get worn and yada, yada, yada. Um, so again, I've had my colors done, but you don't have to have your colors done necessarily. There's a lot of online tools, a lot of free online tools, although I think that that, I think it's very hard to evaluate yourself. I would have been 110% completely wrong if I were doing an online quiz to evaluate myself. That's not to say other people wouldn't be able to identify what they are. Um, I was just completely wrong and I thought I had a good eye for color. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch. I've had my colors done by Christy Russell and I'll link her information down below if you are interested. Um, but I think having a professional look and do your colors, if that is interest to, of interest to you, is definitely worth the investment. So for instance, so I was given this little color wallet and these are all of my um, best colors, like my real light ones. And then you get into, these are all basically the colors of the rainbow, but the ones that look best on me. Those are dark purples there at the end. But what I also love about this is that when I had these done, um, Christy also sent it digitally as well. So I could have digital colors if I just wanted something on my phone when I'm shopping. Although I much prefer, I just carry this with me. I just, I like having the actual uh, physical wallet with me. Um, but you do get digital colors as well. But she also gives you makeup um, options, which was a game changer for me. Everything that's on my face was, <laughs> was recommended by her color wise. And for doing it virtually, she was just spot on. I couldn't believe the difference that my makeup made again when I switched over. But another thing that she does, um, talk you through, and this is in my little book here. Uh, so she talks about um, kind of my colors and um, just some adjectives that kind of describe that. And then she also talks about jewelry. So this is um, colors and jewelry I should be wearing. So my metals, for instance, gold, antique gold, brass, copper, wood, and tortoiseshell uh, for my jewelry. Also pearls, I should stick to cream pearls. Um, and gems, any any stones basically that match your color palette. So, um, you know, if I was going to be wearing any kind of a gemstone. And then she goes into shoes, belts, and bags. Um, browns are my best neutral, especially those that tone with hair color. 
texture works well. So she's even going with, so anything with, um, that are browns that kind of match my hair, but definitely that um, have some texture is also good. And then talks about um, hosiery, for if you're a woman, um, a golden beige for uh, neutral hosiery that matches your complexion, and then talks about hair colors that are good for you. So if you're wanting to change your hair color, these are all um, hair colors that could work with me. Red, auburn, um, which I'm definitely, I don't know, like a, I don't know what I, you call my hair color. Copper, chestnut, red brown, probably a red brown, golden brown, beige blonde, and um, charcoal black. I think charcoal black would be a little intense for my, for my cup, for, I don't know, like I think that would be a lot of high contrast, but yeah, so she even gives you like colors that would, for hair. So I love this. So this is how I shop, and it has really made a difference. So today we're going to talk about shopping, basically. So Fabric aside, obviously you'll be shopping for fabric if you are making things, but if you are not at a skill level where you're comfortable with making everything, and there's things that I just choose not to make, and we're going to go over that here in a second, um, or if there's things you just choose not to make, um, or even like our accessories, like how we go about picking stuff, because those can make your module go the distance. You know, if you're adding in a belt, different pair of shoes, um, scarves, I actually didn't grab any scarves here, um, but and then what I look for when I'm shopping secondhand and thrifting, because I don't I mean, you could definitely shop in the stores, that's fine. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Um, I just typically shop secondhand and um, thrift. Uh, thrift clothes, if I'm buying stuff that is ready to wear, and sometimes that can get very overwhelming because a lot of times those um, thrift stores and consignment shops, which I'm gonna talk about a consignment shop here in just a second. There was a confusion on that. Not a lot of people, uh, non-US people knew what that was. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but those can be very overwhelming with a lot of stuff crammed into space. Uh, and, you know, and it's not as necessarily as organized or as beautifully displayed as like a regular retail store would be. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about how I kind of go through to do that. So if you're kind of wanting to make a bigger impact on the environment by shopping secondhand, or even just for budget reasons, um, I'm kind of both, <laughs> um, how I go about doing that as well. So let's dig in. So number one, color. I'm always shopping by color. That is the easiest thing to pick out when you are shopping, especially in a situation such as a thrift store um, or a charity shop, however you want to refer to that, where everything's kind of crammed in together. Now, a consignment store is like a thrift store, kind of. So basically, as a seller, I could go in with some, usually it's higher end stuff, nicer clothing, um, even a lot of times stuff that still has the tags on. Although I can find stuff like that at Goodwill, the thrift stores too. You're just more apt to find things at the consignment store. Things are usually organized a little bit better, um, organized by color a little bit better. It's just a little bit um, neater, you know, things are put away a little bit nicer um, at a consignment shop. But basically a person can go in and you can um, take your stuff into the consignment store and then the people at the store will pick what they want to sell and then they sell it in their shop and they um, organize it nicely and then you get a cut of that. So you get a percentage of whatever that item makes. So that's what a consignment store is. Um, there was uh, definitely some confusion on what that meant because there aren't consignment stores everywhere. So that's what a consignment store is. Typically things are a little higher priced. Um, than like a Goodwill or a thrift shop, but um, you can a lot of times find some really nice designer stuff there. Okay, so color. <laughs> what I like to do, once I've decided on, let's say for fall, for instance, what my colors that I'm gonna be playing around and using for the fall are, that's all I'm looking for. So I'm ignoring anything that isn't those colors. So for this fall, I was looking for things that were camel, chocolate, orange, brick red, olive green, eggplant purple, <laughs> or like a plum purple. And then I'm always kind of on a lookout for teal because teal is also a good color. Um, and I think I might bring that in for the winter, so I'm always kind of looking for that one. But that's not one of the core ones. So those were the colors I was looking for. That makes it really easy. When you're scanning through, I'm only touching things that are those colors. Now, my sense of, of eyesight comes in first, sense of touch comes in second. So when I am quickly going down the aisle and looking for things in those colors, I'm touching as I go. And I'm looking in the size range of my size range and then anything above my size range because I can alter things down if it's above my size, size range. I stay clear. I mean, if I'm in the smaller size ranges, it's because I'm looking for stuff for my daughter, not, not for me. So I always stick in my size and above, but I do look in the sizes that are bigger than mine. Obviously, if you're not interested in doing any alterations, just stick to your size. Um, 
so yes, so that's the next thing. So now I'm walking through and I am touching things. So I am looking for, I make pretty much all of my clothing. Things that I choose not to make are um, a lot of times sweaters. Um, I do knit, and we're going to talk about that in a minute as well, but I'm looking for like cashmere um, knit, you know, that I'm probably not going to make. Um, silk knits, I'm looking for that. Um, I stick, mostly knits is what I'm basically looking for, mostly because I'm a hard, I'm really hard to fit. I am a much smaller frame than what my size, than what my boobs put me in. <laughs> So for a button-up shirt, for instance, I've never been able to buy ready-to-wear button-up shirts. I have had, would have to buy a size big enough to not have complete gaping across my chest that the shoulders are like way off my arms. Um, then they're super long and, you know, it just doesn't fit. Or if for things to fit me in here, I'm super tight across the chest. And that can also, the same thing can be said for blazers. I have a hard time. It'd have to be a pretty boxy blazer in order for me to fit correctly or um, coats and jackets. So usually I have to buy up and then alter them down, um, which can, in blazers can be kind of problematic. Occasionally I can find one, but for the most part, it's easier for me to make those my own. So I'm basically only looking for knits, but that can be different for you. If you um, don't usually have a problem with um, woven stuff, and if actually you can alter things pretty easily, you know, if maybe you just need to shorten sleeves or whatever, um, sometimes that can be Great. So just kind of decide what are you looking for? What are you not willing to make? Um, or maybe t-shirts. A lot of times I'm looking for t-shirts. I can make a t-shirt, but if I see a cool stripe, this is a thrifted top. This is a rust color in a cream. Well, I've never seen fabric like that in those colors. Um, so yeah, I grabbed this uh, in a recent consignment shop haul. I have a striped shirt that's like an ochre color and with a cream white stripe on it or creamy stripe on it. I've never seen fabric like that. So yeah, for and I love a good striped t-shirt. So yes, I will grab those as well. So know what you're kind of looking for. That's another big tip there. Now, as I'm going through, I'm again, like I said, I'm looking for colors. So this is a top. I actually thrifted this one, I think last fall. This is a turtleneck. We all know how I feel about turtlenecks. I love them. Um, and while I can make myself a wine colored turtleneck, I felt this one and checked the tag. So that's the next thing. Once I have felt and I think, ooh, this one might be a winner. Pull it out, check the tag. It's silk knit. Isn't that beautiful? You can see the sheen there. I love silk jersey, any kind of silk knit. Um, it's very hard. It's expensive, number one. Oh, that has, need to pull that through. It's expensive and um, it is hard to find. So I grabbed this, this one. It is silk knit. It's in my color. It's in my size. I think it's a large. I'm like a medium or a large in most tops. Yeah, a large. So, already, this is tick the boxes. And then the final thing I'm looking for is any signs of extreme wear or tear. So if I'm in a sweater, I'm looking at the underarm to see if there's any pilling. Now this is silk jersey, there's probably not gonna be much pilling. Um, and then I'm looking for uh, bug holes because a lot of the stuff that I'm looking for is natural fabrics. In fact, I think I need to wash this, I'm not wash that. Now with silk, a lot of times you can get some discoloration under the arms. Um, so I'm looking at that as well. And just making sure basically that the garment is in good condition. Even though this is only $4 at the Goodwill, um, at the consignment shop, I still don't want to buy it if it's got a, you know, big hole in it or something. So I want to look over it as best as I can. Now occasionally you will get stuff home and notice that, oh crap, you know, that did have a, a hole in it. But for the most part, that's what I am, um, that's what I'm looking for. And then if it meets all those criteria and it's something that I think could easily slide into my wardrobe, um, so having a kind of an ongoing list of things that I can wear. Now this is a turtleneck, it's a basic. Of course that can go in my wardrobe. Um, I'll grab it. So that's kind of what I go through. Now, let's see, let's go through. I also look for things like cashmere. So this is a men's, I look in the men's section too. <laughs> this is a men's cashmere sweater. Um, I kind of feel like it may be felted a little bit. You'll see that a lot in the men's section. It's a chocolate brown. It's beautiful. I immediately felt, could feel it was cashmere. Check the tag. It is 100% cashmere. This is a men's extra large, but it doesn't fit that big on me, which makes, makes me think this probably got thrown into the wash, but it doesn't look horribly felted. It's in great condition. There's not a lot of pilling, a little bit, but nothing major. 
um, you know, a sweater shaver will do just fine. And I thought, I grabbed this thinking that I would um, alter it a little bit and size it down. But once I put it on, it's just kind of just oversized enough that I think it, it kind of goes with that oversized trend. And so I'm not gonna touch this actually. I'm just gonna wear it as is. Um, you know, this it's got a, a cinched in ribbed cuff at the bottom, which helps the sleeves not fall over my hands. And I push my long sleeves up anyway, especially in the winter. Little tuck with this, and this is gonna get worn as is. So that's another, you know, another easy one that will slide very seamlessly into my module. And it's a cashmere sweater, so that's not something that I would easily make. Now, um, another thing, let's see what else do I have here. And I don't only buy like really nice fabric. This is actually, this little sweater is a viscose nylon blend, but it had some neat details. And um, you know, sweaters are something that, especially fine drapey sweaters, this is a little cardigan and it has this cute little collar and buttons down the front. So it looked in good condition um, and I grabbed it. And it does, I wanna wear it, I'm gonna wear it as a cardigan buttoned all the way up, like I'm not gonna wear it as a cardigan, I'm gonna wear it as a sweater and tuck it into things. It's also chocolate brown. So my point for all of this is kind of just that, you know, you can, you can supplement your things that you're gonna make for your module and this may make things a little bit easier and um, not be on such a time crunch um, if you can also thrift a few things. And I think that's a great, um, a great habit to be into. Um, and you're also saving things from the landfill. Uh, these two things are gonna need to be altered. So another thing I'm looking for is, um, yeah, I think this is a, this is an extra large. What is this though? This is a merino maybe? Oh no, this is just a rayon. A rayon sweater knit, but I grabbed it because I loved the dark purple color. This is huge on me. This one's gonna have to be altered. So don't be, yeah, that's why I also shop in the sizes that are a little bit um, bigger than mine. Uh, it's also a turtleneck, it's in my colors, and isn't that fun? Oh, I'm excited to bring that color in. Uh, it's just gonna need a little bit of alteration. So that, you know, definitely keep. And then also I look for really nice knits. This is just a chocolate brown, really big men's t-shirt, like an extra large men's shirt that I could make my own t-shirt out of. Um, so I'm shopping kind of for fabric as well. Like that will just get cut apart and then re-sewn into um, a pattern, basically. I've done that on the channel a few times. So thrifting, that is my um, biggest tip and how I go about thrifting. Recently I've picked up, these are still damp, I just washed them, this beautiful camel sweater. So this is the colors that I was looking for. Um, it's in fantastic condition. I did my wool wash and washed it at home because duh. Um, and that worked just fine. This looks fantastic. So this will be coming into the module eventually. And again, at the end of this, I'm gonna be talking about, okay, now that we have these seven pieces, here's how we can start springboarding to create more modules out of things that are already in my closet. And this is what's, you know, these type of things are gonna be coming in. And then finally, I had this lovely little, um, this is a merino sweater uh, in this beautiful orange. It's still a little damp from being washed. Yeah, these are all in fantastic condition. Um, you know, just look for the pilling, the excessive pilling, check under the arms, especially. Um, sometimes you can get rid of some pilling with um, a sweater shaver. Um, sometimes you cut holes into it like my friend Jenny <laughs> said uh, before. So yeah, definitely. All right, on that note with sweaters, if you knit and if that's something you enjoy doing, which I do, um, yeah, pick colors of yarn that go into your palette as well. It makes yarn shopping so much easier. Uh, so when you walk in, you're not completely sucked in by all the beautiful yarn, because who doesn't get sucked in at a yarn shop? All of us do, it's like going into a fabric shop. Um, it just helps you really narrow down your um, choices. Uh, so this is my soundtrack sweater. This is freshly blocked, um, but it's in my colors. I've got the orange and then the kind of an eggplant purple that's in there, so this will be coming into my um, module as well eventually. So yes, even with your knitting and your other slow crafts, just keep your color palette in mind, whatever that color palette is, and um, you're just gonna find that everything goes together and that everything that you spend so much time making has a, a partner and has, has purpose in your closet and can go with other things, and you'll find that putting outfits together is so much easier, it's almost, 
it's almost mindless, which is how I like to be. I don't want to spend a lot of time getting ready in the morning. I want it to be as mindless as possible, and that's a great having a color palette. I'm, I just can't say it enough. It's just a game changer. And again, you don't have to have your colors done professionally. Just pick a color palette, something that you know looks good on you, um, and mess around with it. And if you do find you need some help, yeah, save up. I find it, it's a fan, it was a fantastic investment, and I mean, I don't have to do it again because once your colors are your colors for life, um, but I would 100% do it again if asked. So um, yeah, I would pay for it all over again because it was it made that big of a difference in my wardrobe and in my closet. Um, and I found that that little money and in investment has saved me so much money in buying yarn and uh, fabric and even thrifting. It's made a huge difference in saving money there. Okay, now let's talk about accessories. So another thing, like I mentioned with my color analysis, is it talks about um, accessories, you know, your belts, shoes, um, kind of the colors, obviously scarves, you're just gonna be looking for colors in your color palette. And I forgot to grab, I didn't grab any scarves, but you know, you'll get the idea. <laughs> so I've actually pulled a couple of things from my closet when it comes to belts. So she mentions that, um, ooh, that number one, my jewelry colors are um, basically gold, antique gold, brass, copper, wood, and tortoiseshell. So wood, we're looking at browns. Tortoiseshell obviously has like your camel, mustard, some blacks, dark browns that are in there. Um, and then I'm looking for belt buckles and that kind of thing that are in the gold, antique gold, brass, copper family, um, which all kind of makes sense. You know, my earrings that I bought, you know, I'm, I'm sticking more. I do wear silver jewelry occasionally just because I already, I have it. Um, but I've always been more drawn to the gold. In fact, when I got married, even my wedding ring is yellow gold. And I got married in the uh, early 2000s, 2003, um, when it was very, very popular to have a platinum ring. So platinum was the medal of the day, and I'm so glad that I went with um, yellow gold for mine, or white gold. People were going with platinum rings and white gold for their bands. I'm so glad that I went with yellow gold. Um, anyway. <laughs> so that's the jewelry. So I have, number one, this brown belt. Um, she also said texture was good for me. And this, it's almost a Western style. You can kind of see the little pattern in here. Guys, I've literally had this belt since um, college, my freshman year of college. I remember buying it at Anthropology, my freshman year of college, which was a long time ago. Um, it has this gorgeous belt buckle on it. Now this belt has not fit me at times and then fit me at times. It's definitely one that I need to wear at my waist. So it does not do as great for anything below my waist because it is not big enough to go below my waist. Um, but yeah, I put this on with my new shirt dress actually. and Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah, but if you're buying belts and accessories, it's so easy to pair different things with, with um, you know, if you have all kind of the same color family, you know, it just, everything matches. Like you don't have, you know, I want a belt that can go around my waist. Okay, here's my choice. You know, that's perfect. It just works out so well. And then my second belt that I grabbed <coughs> along the tortoiseshell lines also goes animal print. You guys have seen this. This is a calf hair belt. Um, my mom got it for me. It's a cabbie belt. Also, we've got a brass um, belt buckle on here. It's one and a half inches wide, which is just about as wide as I can go because I have a short torso. This one can be worn lower. It's bigger. So I can wear this one a little bit lower if I want to wear uh, my Liana stretch jeans, for instance, are, they're not a high rise jean. They're like a mid rise jean. So they are like, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches below my waist. This fits perfectly around, you know, those jeans. It's a perfect um, length. So, and I love this as a little bit of added, again, texture, because that was in my um, recommendations um, when I had my colors done. Love it. I, and I love animal print. I mean, it's a neutral, right? <laughs> but it's all my nice warm colors. So that is it. And again, when I'm looking, when I go to the thrift stores, I always go through the belts, um, but I'm looking again for brass, antique brass, copper belt buckles, and I'm looking for basically shades of brown, nice warm colors, um, camels, uh, darker browns, um, any of the tans, definitely animal print because, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't buy any, I never buy black belts because I just don't wear black. Um, even in my shoes, I don't wear black. So yeah, it makes shopping so much easier when you can kind of weed out all of that. And you can just do a real quick thick look, look through. So you're not having to go through everything like, oh, do I like that belt? Do I like that? It's really easy when you're just going by color. 
All right, now we're gonna talk about my shoes. I have pulled every single pair of shoes that are in my fall and winter wardrobe. Um, with the exception, I have two pairs of high heels that I just have in my closet that sometimes I'll wear to church or to nicer events. I didn't pull those because those aren't really my everyday shoes. Um, I, I just don't wear them that often. But let's talk. I have a couple of new additions here. So let's talk about the shoes that will be coming back into my wardrobe. Number one, I have my Oxblood boots that I bought for off eBay last year, if you guys remember, for $40. They're leather boots. I mean, you can smell their leather. <laughs> um, they've got a brass little metal um, piece there. So that's, again, what I'm looking for. These are an oxblood color. So this is a brown that goes a little bit reddish purple. Again, perfect for my color palette. They were a no-brainer. It's nice slick leather. They go with everything. Riding boots are really, excuse me, <laughs> very sorry, apologies. Um, riding boots are very in this uh, fall and winter. Obviously, these have a little bit of a heel on them, but, you know, it's a, not a very tall heel. So I can definitely... Um, I'm wearing them per that trend. It's an equestrian trend that's come in for the fall. So I've got those boots that you guys have seen that'll be coming back in. Um, I've got my um, Captain boots from Thursday Boot Company. These are so good. These are also kind of, they're like a dark chocolate brown. There's a little bit of ox blood in there. These boots are so good. They are lace up. They are leather. They were super tight and un not uncomfortable, but just really tight when I first got them. It did not take long for them to break into my foot. I love these so much with the lace-up ties. Um, these boots are so good. They still have this style, and they have a ton of different colors. So basically, whatever color you're into. Um, they make them small batch down in Mexico. It's a New York-based company. Um, they're just gorgeous. And I think that they even, you know, I've got some scuffs on the toes, and that's my favorite. When they start to look really worn and broken in, and they get the creases from your foot. I just, I love these, these boots. Those get worn oops, a ton, especially even like when the snow starts falling and stuff, because those can be wiped off so easily. All right. Also, coming back into my closet are my, um, oh my gosh, these are so dirty. <laughs> that need to be wiped down. These are my Coach Leather Driving Moccasins. Also, gold hardware or brass hardware. Um, I had a pair of these in suede that I bought at Nordstrom's, and I loved them. Again, a little bit tight when I first got them. They broke in beautifully. Um, they were in like a burgundy suede. Suede just doesn't wear as long as a slicker leather. They just, I wore them to death until they just looked awful. So they had to go. But um, shortly after I bought the suede ones, I found this color and then a really, um, like a light tan. Um, it's actually also one of my colors. I just wear it more in the spring. Um, same shoe, this driving moccasin at TJ Maxx. And I bought both pairs. Um, they were obviously much cheaper than what I paid for at Nordstrom's, which were, um, I think, like 160 bucks. And I think I bought each of these for like 20 or something ridiculous. But um, so glad that I did. They've been I definitely making them worth the money. So, yes. So these are also coming back into my wardrobe. Now, the rest of these are all new. So, first things, I wanted a pair of feminine white sneakers to wear basically year-round. Um, I probably won't wear these much in the winter, but definitely fall and then again in the spring and definitely in the summer. I got these are Cole Haan. Um, what are they called? They're Grand OS. Um, I, they were getting rid, this was the um, previous model. Um, they've got a new one that's out now, but this one was on sale and I got, uh, what did I pay for it? $60, I think, um, on sale. So these are the Cole Haan. They're leather, white leather uh, sneakers. Nice and dainty. I've already worn them a couple of times. I, I love them. So yes, these were my dainty sneakers. Perfect, exactly what I was wanting. My daughter inherited my Adidas, so. Um, next up, another loafer, because I do like a, a lower shoe. These I got at the consignment store. This is a burnt orange. These are Franco Sartos, and it's suede, so they do need to be treated still. They look almost brand new. There's a little bit of wear at the bottom, so I know they've been worn a few times, but not much. These are in fantastic shape. In fact, you know, they don't feel broken in. Like, they feel pretty um, tight, which may be why the person got rid of them. Like maybe they just didn't break them in enough. Um, Cause once you wear like suede or leather, oh my gosh, it'll fit like a second skin. I mean, give it some chance. I had a hard time getting the tag out of there. <laughs> but $18, I got these for $18 at the consignment store. So whoever sold these would get a percentage of that back um, because, the, and then the shop gets a percentage of it. So good, 
so good and in such great condition. I don't thrift a lot of shoes, just occasionally, because um, sometimes that can be a little yucky when you think of a foot. <laughs> I, I guess a boot might be different. It depends on the, the state of the shoe. So I'm very picky about anything that I'm going to thrift or get from consignment on a shoe, but these just look brand new. They fit me really well. They're a little tight width-wise, but that will um, stretch as I wear them. So, the, oh, you're going to see these a lot this fall. And then back in the summer, I was buying some shoes off J. Crew, and these were final sale clearance, and I grabbed them, and I think these are just going to be like a fun shoe. These are calf hair kitten heel boots. Aren't they great? I paid $30 for them. Now, they were final sale. I got them online. Um, luckily, they fit me. <laughs> But, um, I mean, I think they were normally $250, and I got them for $30 or, I think, $35. Um, totally grabbed them. I was, you know, again, looking for a different pair of shoes, of which I did, I did get. But um, I also grabbed these, so these have not been worn yet, and I cannot wait to break them out. Um, so mostly with skinny jeans, maybe with some flares over them, um, where they're just kind of peeking through. Because um, sometimes, the you know, a booty can cut my leg off, so I probably won't wear them with dresses. I think a lot of uh, taller people look fantastic with booties on with dresses, but I just don't have a long enough leg for it. Um, but yes, a little, it's a kitten heel, so not uncomfortable at all to wear. And yes, calf hair, oh my gosh, it's going to go with like everything in my wardrobe. <laughs> bright orange shoes and bright uh, patterned leopard print boots. You know, you got to really know your color palette for those to go with everything. <laughs> All right, and then, um, okay, I grabbed these. I bought these in um, Colorado. It was at a Peruvian um, shop that was there. They were half off. I paid $40 for them. They are a suede upper with this gorgeous woven panel in there. This was the last pair that they had, and they are my size, which, what are the odds? But this gorgeous mustard color really grabbed me. They almost remind me of a Timberland boot, which was totally my high school years. Like, Timberlands were, <laughs> that's, you're hitting, like, combat boots, Timberlands. Like, those were all very much my high school years. Um, but I just thought that that was so amazing. And for $40, I mean, it's a high top. It's got, like, a tennis shoe bottom. Um, I just thought these would be a lot of fun to bring in and to wear more casually with some of my um, skinny jeans or even um, like 7 8 um, straight leg jeans. Um, oh my gosh, it'd be so cute with my Mila's when I get my um, uh, overalls done. I think just great. And again, um, I mean, these colors obviously vary and may be a little bit limiting, but for the most part, this mustard color is a pretty good neutral. So I think I'm going to be surprised how much this can go, especially because I wear a lot of solids, um, how much wear I'm going to be able to get out of that shoe. So that was kind of a, a more of a splurge, um, but I just really loved them. And the fact that they were half off, I felt like that I just needed to go ahead and buy them. <laughs> and then finally, these are my newest boot purchase. This um, I also got from Cole Haan. They were on deep, deep discount. They were $355 pair of boots that I got for 70 so um, I paid $130 for these and for my um, leather tennis shoes. So happy. Um, these are suede, although they're more like a nubuck, to be honest, than really a suede, which is also a leather with a nap. They need to be treated still, but aren't those gorgeous? They have a very small heel. So again, it's that nod to the riding boot, but I wanted something a little bit more brown um, to go with my wardrobe. So I've got my oxblood and these, I won't wear these probably, I mean, I'll wear them in the winter, but if there's snow or anything like that on the ground, I will not be wearing these. I'll wear the oxblood. Um, but yes, I think that these are going to look fantastic under some of my, um, dresses and, um, over some of my skinny jeans. Um, I'm excited to start tucking. I want to tuck some skinny jeans again, kind of, um, give that equestrian nod since that seems to be back in, in the fall. So there we have it. Those are all of the shoes that I will be bringing into my module. Um, again, some of them were very thoughtfully purchased, and when you have your colors in mind and you kind of know what you want to uh, want to purchase and what you want to add to your closet, which mine was just by process of going through everything I'd pinned, the outfits I was really drawn to, and then being able to pinpoint, you know, I don't have anything like that in my closet right now, or you know, maybe my like for in the instance of my boots, like I love my oxblood boots and they meet many of the criteria. But I would also like something brown, something a little bit um, um, less purple and red for some of my outfits. Um, I mean, those go with a lot. But, you know, I wanted a, a, a second pair. And so 
being able to have that list, then when I do see where places that I really enjoy are having big sales or when I'm out thrifting, then I know exactly what I'm looking for. If they've got it, fantastic, you can get a great price. If they don't, okay, move on. Um, you know, it'll come up at another point or if you're just desperate for that item, you know, you can shop thoughtfully and purchase something of quality if you've got the money, um, you know, that you can afford, um, and then have something that you really love in your wardrobe and just be more mindful about what you're spending your money on and what you're putting into your closet. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that was a long one, sorry. Um, so that's kind of my um, cheerleader, you know, you don't have to make everything. You can definitely buy things. Secondhand is fantastic. Um, you can find some really good deals and it's a great way to keep things out of the landfills as well <clears throat> to help with um, how much we consume as a society. It's a, it's a, a lovely thing there as well. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for today. I hope that was helpful. Um, are you guys planning on adding anything uh, thrifted or purchased into your modules? I'd love to hear about it. Leave any questions or comments you have below in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer those. Okay, um, next week we're gonna start um, revealing some of my purchased, or purchased, some of my um, made items. So again, my module that I'll be sharing with you all is all, all gonna be made by me. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start next week um, me showcasing and showing you what I have made. Um, I think we're starting with tops next week. I need to get sewing. <laughs> Okay, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Friday. It's my stop on the uh, Style Maker Fabrics um, fall tour, so it's the showcase of their new fall fabrics that have come out, and I have an outfit to share with you, and it's a good one. Um, it also ties back into the whole module, so um, yeah, it's a good one. All right, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I'll see you then. Bye! Bye!